Hello Canadian gardeners, cold climate gardeners, and gardeners of extremes. How are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist with a plant science minor. And on this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things gardening, but also plant care. So if you like the sounds that, be sure to hit that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and let me know in the comments below what zone or location in the world you are from. It just helps me engineer my videos a little bit. I can see who watches my videos based on the data that YouTube gives me, but I would prefer to engineer my videos more so towards the people who are watching and also engaging rather than what just my analytics tell me, if that makes sense. Because anyone can subscribe doesn't mean that they're actually watching my videos, unfortunately. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to get your plants to flower and in specific the peppers and this video was inspired by Linda. Linda, thank you so much. Linda is a religious Gardening in Canada fan and she has watched so many of my videos. It's insane and actually one of the issues she's been having for years is peppers and so she watched one of my older videos like really really old. I can't believe you made it through that Linda. You are crazy um, and the the information on there is incredibly valid. It's still, you know, up to date and good information. It's just the filming quality, my comfort in front of the camera, all that stuff is a little lax. But she tried out what I recommended in that video and it ended up working for her. So yay for that, but I thought I'd do an updated video on it because the poor souls who have to watch that, we might as well give them a better option. So we're gonna be talking about pepper pots. I brought one of my pepper pots in. I know one person who's gonna be watching this, the Mighty Moustache and Bobby, I'm sorry. You probably aren't gonna be super impressed with this plant, but in my defense, I don't bring these indoors. It's not a long-term thing for me. I literally just wanna grow them to grab some peppers off of them and that's it. Um, Bobby, if you want more intense pepper videos, I suggest you check out Bobby's channel. Um, he has literal pepper trees. Uh, yeah, so that's a thing. But I have a jalapeno pepper plant in front of me. Um, I pot them in very small pots. I do not plant any of my peppers in a garden setting. And the reason for that is my soil in a zone three does not get warm enough to satisfy these guys. So I do not plant them in a garden format. They're all in a container of some sort. I usually keep the containers on the smaller side um, because I like to keep my peppers on the drier side as well. And as you can see, I've got, unfortunately they're green still, but I've got a ton of peppers. So I've got, I'm not even gonna count this. Can I get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. I'm giving up now. There's probably at least 30 plus peppers on this plant. And I grew this from seed in my home. But how did I get this guy to flower? So one of the issues you may have with pepper plants, a lot of plants actually, you may have issues with this on tomatoes, cucumbers, zucchinis, you can name it. I mean, cannabis plants, all of them may have issues flowering and there's a reason for it. When we are growing these in Canada or in a cold climate, we don't have the uh, aggressive weather that a lot of other people have. And so we have a hard time triggering a life cycle. So we have a hard time telling the plant that um, it's time to go to the next stage. And so a lot of times we end up in the vegetative state for extended periods of time, which is not what we want because we're gonna end up with frost. So there's multiple different methods that you can use. Some I prefer more than others. The first one that I prefer the least, and this is purely because of convenience, is to provide some sort of darkness for these plants. So with my Mars Hydro grow tent, what I did is I put my peppers in there. Um, I subjected them to dark periods of time and that's what caused them to you know, flower and grow peppers. But in an outdoor setting, to move all these into a garage or a shed 
put them under a tarp is just a nightmare unto itself. So I prefer not to use that method, but that is a method you can use. Linda uh, contacted me months ago. She was having a really hard time getting her zucchinis and cucumbers to flower. And so I told her that you may have too much sun on them. Um, so consider maybe putting up a shade cloth, which she did and it worked. Um, so sometimes the sun can be just a little bit too intense for a plant and a little bit of shade may be all you need to be able to cure what ails that plant and get them to start reproducing for you and flowering for you. What I do with peppers and what Linda did and worked great is I stop watering them. And I only water them when they are vocal to me. So when they start wilting and kind of um, their leaves start drooping down, that's when I will water them. Until then, I let them go bone dry until I start seeing the flowers. Once I start seeing flowers, I start watering like I normally would. Once you see fruits, you absolutely must, must water a lot on a regular basis because these peppers are very fleshy little things. And so you need to provide them with enough water to flesh out these you know, new fruits. And so you need to be able to provide them with endless amounts of water. You do not want them to go to wilting stage once the flowers have come on and they're starting to produce fruit. So that is some of the, the best ways to get these guys to flower. If you are in a garden setting and you don't have your plants in a pot, what I would do is I would encourage you to try to let them dry out just a little bit or try the shade cloth trick. That may be all you need to do. But in Linda's case, her peppers were planted in her flower bed, like in her garden bed. They weren't in pots. And I think that may have been her issue and why they didn't start flowering right away or when she wanted them to. So she ended up stressing them out by simply not watering them. And the reason she was able to do that was because of the distance and the way that she had planted them. That's really important. You're gonna wanna make sure that you space them out appropriately and properly. But yeah, so this is a really quick video on photo video on how to get these guys to um, flower and reproduce and become glorious little things and it is difficult like sometimes you end up with just foliage and foliage and foliage and I actually had one of my first um, challenges in the garden with something not flowering and actually was with a cannabis plant which was gifted to me by my brother um, you're only legally allowed to have so many plants and he had like one too many. So I ended up with this plant. I don't know what I'm going to do with this plant once it flowers because I'm not, I don't use cannabis. Um, so I'll probably end up just composting it. I know people's ears are screaming right now, but I don't really have anything to do with this thing. Um, but I was really having a hard time getting him to flower. And every recommendation that I could see online was put them in the dark, put them in the dark. Well, this plant is huge and this plant smells like it, it does smell. And so I just didn't want to do that. So I thought, how? Oh, I'm just not going to water them. So I, uh, I didn't water them and now he's flowering. So um, the watering trick seems to work across the board for everything. The only ones I wouldn't do that with is anything that's vining like a cucumber, watermelon, squash, something like that, um, just because they do like lots of moisture. So yeah, if you guys ever wonder, I hate spicy food. There's two people in the world that definitely know that. Gritty City Garden and Mighty Mustache know that I do not like uh, spicy food but who does really like jalapeno peppers is... Miss Ella. Yeah, so I actually dry these out for her and she eats them dried or she'll eat them fresh, but this might be too hard for you still. Yeah. Is it too, is it too hard? Yes, Ella, you like that? So Ella is the jalapeno pepper eater in this family, not me. Well, I don't like peppers, no, but Ella loves them. She actually likes the inside of them. I think she's a masochist, I don't know. So like she spits out the peels 
if anyone else has a pepper or a parrot. So she like literally eats the inside and like spits out the peel. And she loves the seeds. Like she eats the seeds like they're literal candy. Yeah, see, look at this. Ella, what are you doing? Oh yeah, you're gonna eat the top now? Where's that birdie? She can see you guys, or she sees herself in the viewfinder. <laughs> Is that good? And she loves all hot peppers. She doesn't just like jalapenos. She literally, yeah, you just eat those seeds. You disgusting little birdie, you. And then she'll try to give me a kiss after this and it's literally gonna burn. I don't want it. Yeah, she literally, she's going savage on this. We should see by the end of the video, she's eaten the whole thing. But yeah, so this is who I grow peppers for. I don't know, anyone else grow garden food just for their pets? Because yeah, I just don't have anything I could use these for. Like I could make jalapeno poppers. Oh, my eyes are watering from the heat of this thing. It's not even fully ready yet. So, it's good, isn't it? It's, she's got like the messiest little beak right now. You've got so much mess on your face. Well, now you're just going to drop it because you're not holding on to it. Yeah. Was it good? She's like, yes, it was very spicy. So me and Ella want to thank you for watching today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Linda, I am so happy you made it through one of my older videos and it actually worked for you. That's pretty freaking awesome. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.